for a war cry. I said it's time for a war cry. It's homecoming season, and that means that more than 100 black institutions will be giving the sights and sounds. Excellence. This time of year, alum return to their alma maters to relive the best days of their lives, and nobody does it quite like a HBCU. But at the Grio, this homecoming season means that we're going to do more than just celebrate black culture. We are calling on black students and educators to come home, to return to the institutions that were created for us, by us. Breaking news from the Supreme Court. The court has just issued a landmark ruling on affirmative action, officially ending the practice in college admissions processes. Affirmative action no longer exists, and we are not about to beg for a spot at the PWI. We want the best and the brightest to keep going to HBCU. CUs just like they always have. And together, by amplifying black institutions, we can start an HBCU homecoming movement. We're excited to bring you special coverage of HBCUs and homecoming season. Thank you for staying with us tonight on The Grio. I am your host, Mark Lamont Hill. Tonight and every Friday night during this time, we are going to be amplifying black institutions. This week, we want to take you back to where it all began, Wilberforce University in Wilberforce, Ohio. Wilberforce is located about 30 miles east of Dayton. Established in 1856 by members of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Wilberforce was the first private college or university ever to be owned and operated by black people. Now, remember, this is happening before the end of American slavery. It was still illegal to teach black people to read and write, and yet Wilberforce was still out there building for us. Two of the school's most illustrious educators to have ever graced the halls are the legendary Frederick Douglass and the preeminent scholar of the 20th century, Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois. The private institution continues to make waves, specifically in its engineering program. There, students can major in computer, electrical, nuclear, and mechanical engineering. Wilberforce recently won first place in the Echo Care EV Challenge. Joining me now is one of the students on the winning team, Patrick Ricundo. He's a senior getting his Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. That's a smart brother. And then we have another brilliant brother. His name is Dr. Corey Davis. He is a professor of engineering at Wilberforce University and an alum of Morgan State university hbcu down to the socks welcome to both of you my dear brothers patrick i'm going to start with you talk to me about this challenge what's the goal uh for our goal of eco car especially from like we before side it was to create more career for people who attend so we before and we can like achievement that goal for of our senior who is an eco car team already have some good opportunity job and other two have opportunity to go to the Ohio State University to get them them masters. Wow, that, that's I mean that's such an important op opportunity and a great pipeline, uh, Dr. Davis. Uh, diversity is needed uh, in all fields, really, but certainly in STEM around the world, we see a pressing need. How does Wilberforce's engineering program stand out, uh, preparing students for the workforce? Thank you. Wilberforce is indeed uh, engaged and ready and prepared to uh, engage our students for the workforce. Um, we are excited about the fact that we can produce knowledgeable and perceptive humane citizens, uh, mainly citizens who are ready to compete and actually go out in the work workforce from day one to be able to uh, use modeling and simulation tools to be able to support the organizations that they're going to work for. Um, and those modeling simulation tools are things that are ever changing, uh, fast changing. We think about cell phones, we think about just software in general. So being able to understand and appreciate uh, how those tools are used from a diversity perspective and doing that at Wilberforce University, engaging our students with organizations and with companies where they can get internships and, and great opportunities. It sort of sets the stage for them for when their careers start. Patrick, you were born and raised in Rwanda inside of a refugee camp uh, until 2016. Uh, that was uh, your situation. Then your family moved to the United States uh, and things changed. Uh, was there anything about your upbringing that drew you to the career path you're on now? Was was your journey here influential in making you want to pursue engineering? Uh, so as you just say, I was born and raised in a refugee camp in Rwanda where 
in the refugee camp, we didn't have like electricity, we didn't have no rights on it. And when my family have the opportunity to move here for our own good, for more education, for our more opportunity to move here in the United States, I went to high school here and after high school, I was thinking about what should I do to just help the community. And it a trick because I've been just helping out my family back in the refugee camp. I was like, I would love to do it. It's something I enjoy and it's something I see myself try to do in my career job. Mm. Dr. Davis, let me bring you into this piece of the conversation. I keep thinking about the fact that Wilberforce is a member of the UNCF, the United Negro College Fund. And for those who don't know, uh, who aren't aware of what the UNCF does, uh, why are they important, not just to your students, uh, but also to other member schools? Uh, I guess I'll look more back at that and think about myself being a first generation college student. And, you know, think about myself, where would I be without um, organizations such as UNCF? And, and really it evolves, uh, revolves back to access, providing access to those students who may not get the opportunity or may not have the funds or the support to be able to advance their learning. And so the, the advantage that we have being a UNCF member school is that we can provide those opportunities to students like Patrick or, or students across the Ohio or just across the United States to um, have an opportunity to compete for scholarships, uh, have internship opportunities come their way, and then also be able to recruit those students on the front end in high school, retain them at Wilberforce, and then graduate them with opportunities to get great careers when they're done. So we're very thankful for what UNCF does for us, and we're thankful uh, for being a member institution. Patrick, what's life like outside of Wilberforce? You know, Ohio's a great place. The school is wonderful. And I know you're a hard worker. You seem like a focused brother, but is, is it fun? What, what kind of Thank stuff you. do y'all do in Wilberforce other than just go to school? Uh, there is no place like Wilberforce. Wilberforce, we are like one community. Our culture is to be a family there. Even after school, I play golf there and all my people, like, they more than to my family to me. These are people who care about me, people who love who love me, people who wanna push me to move forward. So it's no place like we wow. will, we perform so high. And, and and Dr. Davis, now I know you you went to Morgan, and uh, you, you work at Wilberforce. Do you have competing loyalties here? Like if they play each other in sports, or there's something going, some kind of competition, who do you root for? <laughs> this this could very well be a house divided. Yeah, the truth now, you, uh, Mr. Hill, um, and and being and just like Patrick, being a former student athlete myself, I was uh, I'm an HBCU grad through and through. I had my undergrad at South Carolina State University, so I was a bulldog there. And, you know, I'm a Bulldog now again once more at Wilberforce. So I think I'm going to have to root for the Bulldogs on this one. All right, I'll take that. And for those that don't know, Wilberforce is also has the illustrious honor of being the Delta Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. It's what we call the last of the first. It's the last chapter to be chartered under Kappa Alpha Nu uh, before Epsilon Chapter, which is Lincoln University, became the first of the last Kappa Alpha Psi. Anyway, Wilberforce has a great history, a deep history from W.E.B. Du Bois all the way up to extraordinary people like Dr. Corey Davis and Patrick Rukundo. We love y'all. We thank y'all and best of luck to you. If you want to learn more about the incredible programs that Wilberforce has to offer, all you got to do is go to the website, wilberforce.edu. Our HBCU coverage continues after the break with a look at homecoming football matchups this weekend. Next up, a unique trend taken off at many HBCUs, how you can spot it at homecoming. Hey, family, here on The Griot, you know we amplify black culture, and it is HBCU homecoming season. So we want to take black pride to the yard. If you think your HBCU has the dopest cheer squad, the sickest drum line, and the baddest majorettes, record a video of their performance and send it to us at The Griot. And you know we can't leave out Greek life. So fraternities, sororities, show us why nobody is messing with your chapter stroll or hop. And we gotta take a tour of the yard. So show us your school's best amenity, including the calf. Now here are the categories. Once your video is recorded, scan this QR code or click the link in the bio to upload the video directly to the Grio. Then tune in weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Grio with Mark Lamont Hill to see which schools made the cut. The top two submissions will go head to head in the HBCU versus. Then we'll let the social media streets decide.
Welcome back to the Grio. Time to talk football. Black has been at the forefront of a growing trend at HBCUs where former professional football players have come to accept head coaching positions at the universities. HBCU GO analyst Charlie Neal had the chance to sit down with three of the biggest coaching names that are now roaming HBCU sidelines, all from the SWAC. Watching Bubba play, man, he was just <laughs> always considered, we used to call him the rubber band man. <laughs> So, <laughs> Where did he get well, that time? because he was one of those guys, he could just like a contortionist. Like, you have a guard and a tackle coming to hit him, and he'll just kind of <laughs> dip his shoulder like literally to the ground, and then pop back up and make the tackle. So, and uh, I tried it once or twice, it didn't work. Too well. <laughs> so I was just real proud of him when they named him head coach because I thought it was, I thought it was long overdue, and uh, he actually deserved it. Put a lot of time in HBCU football, and you can tell that he cares about it. And I've always said, even when I first jumped into this. Why not? I should tell a lot of the uh, NFL guys, why are you guys not giving back to these high school and, and colleges? You guys got you know, well knowledge, you know, and these kids need that. And someone like him, who's been successful on all levels, you know, why wouldn't you give back? Cornell, you played in the Arena League, set all kinds of records, threw for phenomenal yards, and what, 160 touchdowns or something, something crazy <laughs> number as far as touchdowns are concerned. How do, you, how do you translate that to what you're doing with your team now and your players and especially your quarterback? Well, in the arena football, it's a fast game. The ball has to be gone within two seconds. And so that translates to the big game because now your quarterback has to make decisions fast. And so we can get those guys getting that ball out of their hand, making the right decision within two seconds. We're going to be in a good, good position. So um, that's what that's where most helps uh, translating uh, to the big game from arena football. I think the thing that's helped me out is that as a new coach, with all of the changes, transfer portal, NIL, all of the coaches had to make the same adjustment. So as opposed to if, if we were still signing 25 to 30 high school kids and going through the traditional route, it took us a longer time, I think, to get things moving. But you know, because of the transfer portal, NIL, it kind of reset, reset with the deck for everybody because they're learning curve. And so I think I'm learning at the same pace of everybody else. So that, that helps me out being a new guy. But I think, um, I mean, a transfer portal, it helps you out at times. You know, we've all got some good kids that have transferred down from Power 5. I think what, what always is told is uh, the, the kids that are leaving HBCUs and moving up to the other schools. And I don't, I don't think it's, it's bigger but not better. That's what I tell kids. You can go to a bigger school. It doesn't make it a better school. And so, but nobody talks about the kids that come down to us who do extremely well. So I think we're getting a lot of Power 5 school kids uh, that we probably wouldn't have gotten before off the initial, you know, recruiting out of high school. And then they come and they're still good players. A lot of times other teams have given up on them too soon or, you know, they just had an issue or whatever or they just didn't like the environment, but they come to us and they're productive guys. So I think it's a benefit also. We got a lot of defensive coordinators, offensive coordinators that have been in the game a long time. They deserve those opportunities also. So again, as long as they're hiring the right guys that's qualified and that's coming out here that care about the HBCU guys and making these guys men and fathers and leaders, um, I think it's all good. You can catch HBCU goals Charlie Neal at SWAC matchup this weekend. He'll be there for Texas Southern and their Tigers, who will be going up against Bethune-Cookman in Daytona. Charlie always gets the good spots. The Wildcats will be defending home field for the homecoming, and bragging rights are on the line. If you want to tune in, all you got to do is check out your local listings or download the free HBCU Go mobile app. You can also visit hbcugo.tv. HBCU Go, our sister network, will also be in Durham, North Carolina, covering the CIAA matchup between Winston-Salem State and Shaw. Play-by-play -play analyst James Hadnot joins us now with a look at what fans can expect. Well, thank you so much, Mark. This matchup is intriguing for multiple reasons. One, because Winston-Salem State and Shaw University are both 2-2 two and two in the conference right now, so both have to start stacking up some Ws if they want to make any waves in the Southern Division. And also, Shaw is starting to figure things out in regards to their passing attack. Patrick Blake has found multiple wide receivers, Dante Lee Jr., Ashawn Belcher. Those are two of some of his top targets. So. Winston-Salem State struggles in regards to their pass defense. They give up the second most amount of yards in the conference. So if Shaw can figure things out in regards to their passing attack, find those receivers that I mentioned, they can find themselves victorious on Saturday. Lastly, in regards to their series matchup, Shaw has won three out of the last four meetings between themselves and the Rams. So that's all that we have to expect going into the matchup on Saturday. I'm James Hadnot, HBCU Go. You have a front row seat to that game right here, only on the Grio cable. Kickoff is going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern. 
But if you plan to travel, meteorologist Lynette Charles is standing by at the Weather Channel with a look at the forecast. Lynette, should fans pack those ponchos or should they just bring some sun visors? What's it going to be like? Mark, I'm going to have to say both, because if you are in the mid-Atlantic, you are going to need that poncho, but if you are going to be down off towards the south, you're going to need the sun visors, the sunglasses. Let's start you out in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, this game, we have the Rams taking on the Bears, and it looks like we will see the rain throughout the game. Temperatures will be in the mid to upper 60s there, and then we head to the south. Oh, yeah, this is going to be the game, right? As we head to Daytona Beach, Florida, that uh, kickoff at 3 o'clock, Tigers taking on the Wildcats. Lots of sunshine out there. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 80s. It is going to look pretty good. The winds will be in the west at about 10 to 15 miles an hour. So what we have going on on your Saturday is a system that will continue to work its way on off towards the east, bringing plenty of rain. So if you are going to be around this neck of the woods for other games, yes, it's going to be wet down off towards the south. Conversely, nice and sunny there. And then we will be quite warm as we head down south and then we will be much cooler up to the north. So not only will you need the poncho, you'll need something to keep you warm. Mark. Thanks, Lynette. Next up on the Grio, why did you choose your HBCU? We want you to hear directly from students and learn of a chance to be featured on the Grio after this quick break. Welcome back to the Grio. You're taking a look over the campus of Bowie State University in Maryland. Founded in 1865, the school was created to educate newly emancipated black people in Baltimore. After relocating to Bowie, the school went from a teacher's college to a liberal arts college to a state university. Bowie State is Maryland's oldest historically black university and one of the oldest in the nation. Go Bulldogs! Now look, you know we love shouting out black institutions and we've been asking you to shout out yours. So I'm going to pass the mic to a proud graduate of Norfolk State University in Virginia. What's going on, everybody? My name's Antonio Mundy, and I attended the Norfolk State University. I graduated in the class of 2002 with my bachelor's in mass communications with an emphasis in general broadcasting, and then graduated again in 2005 with my master's in media management and mass communications. My family has gone to Norfolk State. I love NSU for everything it's done for me, from the professors to the lifelong friendships I've created, and also shout out to the baddest band in the land, the Norfolk State University Spartan Legion, which I am an alumnus of as well. So once again, thank you, Norfolk State, for everything you've done for me, and behold the green and gold. Yeah, way to stun on them, Antonio. Now, we want to know why the rest of y'all love your HBCUs. If you want to get in on the fun, scan this QR code that's on your screen right now and upload your video. You just might get featured right here on the Grio with me. All right, stay here. A final word after this quick break. All right, family, we have reached the end of the show. But before I let you go, a word about homecoming safety. There are more than a dozen homecoming celebrations happening around the country this weekend at HBCUs. And the Grio has reported on two homecoming weekends that were ruined by gun violence. We saw at Morgan State and Bowie State University what can happen. Last weekend, two people were hurt in a shooting on Bowie State's campus in Prince George's County, Maryland. And it happened just days after a shooting at Morgan State University in Baltimore, which is less than an hour away. That attack left five people hurt, including four students. The rest of Morgan State's homecoming activities were canceled. Bowie had invited Morgan State students to participate in their homecoming before that one got interrupted by gunfire. The suspects in these cases are believed to not be members of the schools. No one was killed, but this could have easily gone the other way. Both of these campuses are public institutions, and there has been a history of complaints by students that it's just too easy for outsiders to access those yards. We saw at Edward Waters University, a private HBCU in Jacksonville, Florida, how safety measures stopped violence at the front door when a mass murderer tried to get on campus in August. I'm not suggesting that public institutions go private. I'm simply calling on all HBCU campus administrators to not only increase security this weekend, but to also put measures in place year round so that parents can rest easy knowing that their child is getting a quality education and staying safe while doing it. You can get nonstop HBCU content just by visiting the griot.com slash HBCU. You can also select HBCU under the lifestyle tab, or you can get your news on the go by downloading the free Griot mobile app, and you can find unlimited content that will always amplify black culture. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Mark Lamont Hill. Have a great night.